Welcome back to this video where we will be talking about East Asia. So early societies in East Asia basically revolved around China. So these early civilizations in China really began around the Yellow River, which was really this big source of fertile land. And they had less soil, which was really fertile. And the Yellow River was called China Saro because of the extensive flooding. But as a result of this flooding, like the Nile River in Egypt, it allowed for a lot of rich, soft soil that was easy to work and grow agriculture. So the first civilization or dynasty sort of is the Shah dynasty right here and this is debatable because some people say it's a dynasty while others don't say it but it's just good to know in case so the Shah dynasty is the first and basically it was this really sort of basic dynasty and then right after there was the Shang dynasty and the Shang dynasty was really the big main dynasty for China at the beginning and basically it arose after the Shah fell and then with the Shang Dynasty, there were many written records and material remains discovered. For example, there was bronze metallurgy, so we know that the Chinese had metals back then. And it was also used by the ruling elite, and they monopolized it so they could have full control over the production of it. Also, there were horses and chariots, so that came with the Indo-Europeans. And also, the agricultural surpluses from the Yellow River and stuff really supported large troops and a vast network of walled towns, so these people could really survive and protect themselves. After the Shang started falling came the Zhou Dynasty. The Zhou Dynasty is basically also really big, just like the Shang. And in the Zhou Dynasty, they had this really important thing called the Mandate of Heaven. And this was basically the right to rule. Basically, the Zhou said that to run the government, they had to have a mandate from heaven or legitimacy given from the Son of Heaven. And this was only given to certain virtuous rulers. And if you didn't have it, that was a legitimate reason to overthrow. So we would see later a lot of people try to overthrow the Zhou dynasty because they felt they didn't have legitimacy anymore. And, and many subsequent dynasties in China as well. Pol politically, they were decentralized. So it wasn't like all the other governments, sort of. And they had a weak central government. And this would eventually contribute to their fall because regional powers would start coming in. Also, iron metallurgy started developing, so stronger tools as well. And eventually, the Zhou fell, and then it was a warring state. So there was this period of warring states from 400 to around 200 BC. So these are basically the three big main Chinese dynasties at the beginning. Afterwards, we have societies and families. So there was this government bureaucracy, and it was administrative and military offices. And these were basically like the ruling elites. They used people to help them. Also, there were merchants and trade, and these were really important. Although trade was sort of minor in China at the beginning, they would eventually become really important. But the vast majority, the biggest amount of people were actually peasants. These people didn't have land, and they just really just worked around the house trying to provide food for their family. And some women would also do some of their own artisan work. And this was really just mainly China after in and around this age. For family, of course, patriarchy was really big like every other area in this time, although China was especially patriarchal. And you also had their beliefs in the veneration of ancestors or ancestor veneration. And basically, they believed that the ancestors continue to influence themselves even after they died. So you can see this in Mulan. They actually got that part right. But basically, they would bury material goods with the dead because they would think that this is going to carry on with them to the afterlife and offer sacrifices. And this still happens today. And they, of course, there's the worship of ancestors. So that's a really big deal. Also back then there were fortune tellers and they used these oracle bones which were basically where they took like a turtle shell and inscribed a question onto the bone and then when they heated it up the bones would actually crack and then based on the cracks they could read the message that the bone was trying to give so that was a really big deal and you can still find some of these like they did back then. Also, early Chinese writing was really just pictographs, so it was like simplified from pictures unlike the Sumerian alphabet in English which was just a bunch of characters. Also, it's modern Chinese is really a descendant of the Shang writing times so you can see that Chinese is really an old language. Also a final thing is there was a lot of literature back then even though not much of it exists today because it was a long time ago and a lot of paper and the stuff have disappeared but the most notable one was the Book of Songs and this was really a collection of verses and it really just helped tell a lot of things about those ancient Chinese dynasties that we might not know today. So Book of Songs remember that. And one final thing is you really need to memorize the Chinese dynasties. You'll need to know all of them because they appear frequently on the tests. And so one thing to remember is XSZ. And eventually this will continue with all the other Chinese dynasties. So the first one was the Sha, then it was the Shang, and then it was the Zhou. If you can remember this acronym, then you'll easily remember all the dynasties because you can just match up the names of the dynasties to the first letter. So XSZ, remember that for now, and we'll continue when we learn about more Chinese dynasties later. So this has been chapter five, early societies in East Asia. Now let's go to chapter six. Chapter 6 really begins to talk about Mesoamerica and Oceania. So this was sort of like the isolated areas around the world because it wasn't in Eurasia. But basically, 
there were important civilizations in these areas too. So one of them was the Olmecs, and these were basically people in Mesoamerica, so around modern day Mexico. And basically they got here from the large wave of humans that traveled from Siberia to Alaska. So that was the Bering Land Strait. And also, they were first hunters, but it became difficult, so agriculture began as well. And you see their agriculture is really common in American dishes like beans, squashes, chilies, and then later the revolutionary maize or corn became a staple as well. For these people, really, farming was pretty hard because they didn't have large domesticated animals, no cows, sheep, goats. These were all over in Europe. They did have the llama and alpaca, but it wasn't that great. And they also didn't have wheeled vehicles, so a lot of work and heavy stuff they did really just by human power and grit. Also, the Olmecs were the rubber people, so as I said earlier, they lived near the Gulf of Mexico. And these were really sophisticated. They also had some trade of jade and obsidian, and they had lots of influences. So of course, the maize, and then they would have human sacrifice, would later go on to the Aztec and Inca. They also had ball games and ceremonial centers, and also a calendar, which is really similar to the one we use today, actually. And after them were the Maya. The Maya were pretty similar, but they also had some differences. And you can just read that by yourself. But these were some pretty sophisticated people as well. Also, down in South America, near the Andes Mountains, so that's around Chile, that area, there was a Chavin cult. And this was or really just another group, sort of like the Olmec, except they were farther south. And they lived in the Andean region, so the Andes Mountains, so modern day Peru, Bolivia, around there. And they also had early agriculture in South America. And this Chavin cult really had some people in it. And it was really just a cult of all sorts of stuff. But they were able to develop a complex society as well. And the first cities in South America actually started beginning after then too. Also, there was Mochica, which was an early Indian state. And they had some irrigation and also some legacies in South America. In Oceania, it was sort of different. So this is going back over to the Pacific. There was Australia and New Guinea. And these were really just separate communities in the Pacific Ocean. Really, these people were settled by seafarers, people from like... Asia that traveled by boats, they used outrigger canoes, which really helped them to get there. They had some herding animals, and primarily they cultivated root crops, so like taro, cassava, really just those root crops you really start to think of. And some actually made it to Micronesia, which is also in the Pacific, and Madagascar, which is over in the Indian Ocean off the coast of Africa. So these people traveled pretty far, and they were sophisticated too. They had potteries and hierarchical chiefdoms. So that was also showing they had a pretty civilized government structure. So this is chapter six, early societies in the Americas and Oceania. And this video has been chapters five and six. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you in the next one.